What is good? We're back. Bang, and a fresh crack to get it rolling. We got Jay Wayne. We got no Matt tonight, but we got a new member of the tripod. We got our guy Rob. We were uh, rolling through Twitter. This guy's a fantastic follow at Quintoris, and we decided, hell, let's try to uh, let's see what this guy's got. Let's see if we can get, add another member to the crew here. So, Rob, man, how you doing? I appreciate you guys having me on, man. I'm great. I'm great. I'm chilling. All right, man. Well, we're excited to get into it. I know we have one of your favorite prospects. We got another prospect. We got the first of the RBs. We're going Zach Evans. Um, I know that's I mean, maybe maybe uh, Rob's pants just got a little tight. Uh, <laughs> I think it moved. With old Zach Evans up there. But he is coming in at six foot 215. And there was a little, we weren't sure how, how big he was because there were some you know different sources. But it, that seems to be what's locked in there. Six foot 215. We can't, know, can't know anything until the combine. That's true. That is true. Five stars uh, coming out of North Shore High School in Houston, Texas. Uh, he was the first ish running back rank in the nation, depending on where you look. I, uh, I read that he was the number one overall prospect for right, a second. Right. And then which, he, then he kind of fucked up. Right. Right. And he should have just left his phone. Should have given his phone up. <laughs> right. So he gets he gets sent home from his high school state championship. Maybe the first red flag, a little ding on the profile right well, there. Well, the first red flag were the two games in the beginning of the season that he got suspended for for disciplinary actions. Right. You can't read. I don't know what that was about. But he, but there were two games in the He's beginning young. that he got He's suspended young. for, and then the ne- and then the state championship game right. they suspended for. It also should be noted he missed the first half of, of the semifinal game to take the ACT. Hmm. That might be a ding in the right, a check in the right box. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe he just really was procrastinating. Maybe he forgot to take it. <laughs> yeah, 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 I needed that. But he was um, he did he did crush his freshman year, uh, three point seven five GPA. Yeah, uh, made the all rookie all American academic team. Yeah, right? I, I don't think it, there's any smarts. I think it's maybe attitude, uh, and you know, it's easy. You're in high school, and you're you're. I'm number one. Look at me. You know, it's just tough. I I don't know how I would be at 18 saying I'm basically the big dick running back in the nation, you know, especially now with these NIL deals. But that was a little bit before then. Right. Um, Might have played a part in the transferring, which happened in year three. Right. So he is he's 21. He'll be 22, uh, 530. So he'll be 22 coming into his first season in the NFL, which isn't isn't terrible. It's not quite as great as you would want to be, but not not bad. Um, So inevitably, he does choose TCU, but that wasn't his first choice. No, he actually signed with Georgia, a national letter of intent. Was excited about that. Almost went to a different school that his grandma was the hometown of. I don't know. The recruiting trail of this guy was ridiculous. Like He was all over the place, but did sign with Georgia. And then they, they, they broke off that national letter of intent. Now, depending on where you read, that was mutual or it was Georgia dumping him because of what happened in the state championship game. Um, I, a lot of people like to paint a negative picture of this guy. I don't know if I'm ready to buy it. Right. And he we're, fucked up. He admitted to it. He said he was sorry. He no, he owned it. And then he moved forward with it. Um, but I don't know. And we're going to hit some of that as we get through here. But like the, the, the couple of things in high school, your first thing is giving you a little bit of character concern. So he does end up at TCU. Um, his freshman year, you know, is it, fine. Nothing, nothing crazy on the freshman year. Um, but then his sophomore year, he comes in and he is he's basically leading this backfield at TCU, which is why he went there through through his first five games. He's 22 carries or six carries the first game because they played Duquesne. Nobody really carries the ball a ton in that game. Um, then 22, 15, 15, 17 and 18. So those are his carry thresholds for when he's in his sophomore year, really getting the most usage. And, you know, if you have the thousand foot view of this and just look at the game logs, Kendra Miller is obviously had a great season this year, um, but he was kind of the running mate with Evans there. Um, obviously not quite highly as touted, but you know, that's kind of the second maybe red flag here of saying, well, Miller, basically, why did he kind of have a hold of that backfield too? Well, he really didn't until Evans had, a, I believe it was a turf toe injury in week five or six. Um, Cause before that uh, Miller had four carries, five carries, five carries, 12 carries, which is, I believe was the game that 
that Miller suffered the injury and then Evans came back and had an additional 18 carries. Miller went back down to six carries. Uh, So if Evans was out there, he was mostly getting the lion's share of the work at TCU. So like I said, you, you zoom out, you know, there's a 92 attempts for Evans, 83 attempts for Miller, 648 yards for Evans, 628 yards for Miller, 7.0 yards per attempt for Evans, 7.5 for Miller, uh, five touchdowns to seven touchdowns, uh, you know, so very similar uh, amount of, of production from these guys, but it, it doesn't all, it's not all the same. Evans had that backfield all wrapped up as pretty much his and was dominating it. It took a little bit of an injury for Miller to get on. Um, so, you know, I don't, th- then we mentioned the transfer. I'm not really sure why he transfers. Maybe it was because Sonny Dykes, you know, he's not a Sonny Dykes guy. I, you know, I, I don't really know. Maybe they said, hey, we want to mix Miller in a little more. We like what we saw at the end of the season. Evans is saying, hey, I'm the number one guy in the nation. I want my backfield. Um, and hey, I, you know, I can go to the SEC and go to Ole Miss and I can, I can maybe get my, get my loan share of the backfield over there because they had a bunch of backs exit um, that were kind of the, the the stalwarts over there, if you will. Evans leaves, all of a sudden, Miller's a goddamn great player. Like, it's not like, oh, you know, we're, we're just some schlub in Miller, maybe because he wasn't as highly recruited as as Evans was, that you're, you're going to kind of say, well, you know, Evans and Miller, yada, yada, yada. But Miller, K- Kendra, I'm not exactly sure where the draft capital is going to be, but I know a lot of people really like him through this draft cycle. TCU had a great season. Miller had a great season. He was outstanding this year. Um, So it's not like, again, that that guy was any sort of a bum coming in here and taking anything from Evans. First of all, he really wasn't. And second of all, even if they split carries this year, they're both pretty good players. Um, So then, you know, you get the transfer, you go to Ole Miss, and, and you think you're getting the backfield all to yourself. And lo and behold, here comes Judkins. Judkins, you know, underrated prospect. They missed on the on the recruiting trail of high school prospects here. Three star recruit, a, a three star recruit. I don't know if it was the way the cycle went or or how that was. If there was some sort of COVID stuff involved there, I, I think Judkins was a little banged up in, throughout some of his later years in high school. Uh, they didn't have him as being a fast guy at all. Uh, when you look at his profile coming out of high school, and then this year he was clocked at twenty two point five miles an hour that judkins that's like, good right that's a fast fucking guy judkins is is maybe the number one freshman in the in the nation at this at this point or at least through large chunks of the season the most productive he broke the old miss touchdown record um and and just really did uh you know out snap evans here um i believe it was 313 snaps to 172 of evans 252 attempts for judkins to evans 136 1,476 yards for Judkins to Evans, uh, 893. Uh, The yards per attempt, well in Evans' favor, 6.6. Obviously, a lot less carries, um, 5.9 for Judkins. And then 16 TDs for Judkins, breaking that record, like I said. Um, And then only three for Evans. So, again, it's not as if Evans goes over here says, hey, I'm going to take over this backfield and, and doesn't. And it's some schlub that just beats him out. It's a guy who may at this time in two years from now, may be the number one running back in the nation um, as far as coming draft prospect. Judkins was outstanding this year. Throw on the tape. It's absolutely ridiculous. He's super fast. The hands are half decent. He's uber athletic. It's just he's jumping. He's cutting people up. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And maybe Evans comes in a little hot and Lane Kiffin's like, hey, we got to humble this guy a little bit. We got quiet, reserved Judkins, and we're really liking what we're seeing out of him. We're going to give him some run. And then Judkins just took it and ran with it. Now, if the the number one running back in the nation, you would think that Evans would be able to maybe get a little bit better footing. But they're, at the end of the day, they're still human beings controlling who plays and who doesn't. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't say I can't deduct too much from Evans because Judkins was fucking awesome and Kendra Miller back there was fucking awesome. I mean, it just seems like we're, 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 you know, the transfer. Oh, well, you can't transfer. Well, Kenny Walker couldn't transfer, transferred. And then Kenny Walker was that dude when he transferred. You don't have that case here. So you were already holding a negativity in the Kenny Walker game when you were saying, How did well, that work out it, did, it didn't it didn't work out at Wake. So he had to transfer. And, yeah, you got the lion's share of the carries, but you still were a little unsure. So Evans transferring Which, and not getting the lion's share of the carries. I'm sure people are automatically upset about that. 
Kenneth Walker looked great at Wake Forest. Why they didn't use him more is beyond again, me. Another argument. Again, right. it's humans running yeah. the show here, and you make bad decisions. I mean, mm. you know, there's plenty. You can go through the, the timeline the time. of— Joe Burrow had to transfer. Right. I mean, Justin Fields didn't play at UGA. Uh, you know, just time after time, you know— uh, Damian Pierce didn't play that much last year. Anthony Richardson wasn't starting for Florida. James you know, Williams, Ohio State, uh, Alabama. Right. You could go. Yeah, Jalen Hurd out carried Alvin Kamara. I mean, shit. Exactly. So there's there's not a great production profile for Evans because yeah, he didn't mm-hmm. get the run that you think he would. But really, with the idea here is to paint the picture that I don't think it's an indictment on on how bad Evans was. I don't think he was like a bust of a product prospect by any means. I think when you turn on the tape. You can instantly see how natural this is to him. Yeah, I mean, I can throw up some metrics real quick because they they back up that they're like the metric the metrics crowd doesn't like Evans. Would you would you say would you agree with that, Rob? Yeah, I mean that that's the problem because it's like they I feel like they just don't take into account that he's playing with two other NFL level backs during his time in college at TCU and Ole Miss. So it's like they see the raw numbers and they're like, ah, he's not as good, but. Right. I don't so know. I just the I rushing. Feel like that's a weak, weak analysis to me. Well, they like it to be black and white with the spreadsheet, you know. And and, and I do want to normalize spreadsheets, you know. I want to know what these numbers are. I want to see them, um, but I also want to take into account what happened on the field and and how the man looks because the numbers don't back up a great production profile, like y'all said. Rushing attempts, market share. His best year was twenty three point eight percent. That's in the ninth percentile. Rushing yards per team attempt was one point five five. That's in the sixteenth percentile. The true uh, what is what is this? What I don't is it? I don't know what it's actually. called. I don't know. We got to have JB on here to explain some of this more. But one of the stat one of the metrics that he cares about is the rushing yard market share divided by the rushing attempt market share. The, the your worst year, which he had uh, one point one seven, which is actually really good. That's the eighty first percentile. So mm. that might, that might mean he's good. Right. I don't know how much that weighs into his score. I want to get into more of that. But I'm just kind of giving you guys these metrics if if this is what you're into. The target market share, not great. Right. 6.9%, 51st percentile. We'll touch on the pass catching here. Sure. Um, the receiving uh, market share, his best year was only 5.02, which is the 12th percentile. Um, average yards per carry, though, 90th percentile was right. 6.8. Not, that, that, that's, that's his basically his lone shining moment. But it also does paint a picture of he's productive when he gets his shot. I mean, I think I think that's that's what that number is worth to me. And when you watch him, you, you can clearly see that. Right. Um, and, and then let's look at the rankings of where he where he matched up in 2022 uh, kind of backs up the numbers that stink. Right. Only 136 attempts. Now, these the stats we showed you before were for the whole career, including bowl games and playoff games. These stats going against other players in the league are only taken into account. The, the regular, regular season, season right. numbers. So 136 attempts, that's tied for 89th. 80, 893 yards, that's 54th. 6.6 yards per attempt, though, that's tied for 17th. Eight touchdowns, tied for 59th. The, the yards after contact, 481, that's 67th. Yards after contact per attempt, I expected that to be a little higher, 3.54, which is good for 51st. 34 missed tackles, forced tie for 77th but then we get to the meat and potatoes here my fit my, my favorite things to say why he's good the 10 plus yards and the 15 plus yard runs are in the 22nd ranked 22nd 21st um and, and a good breakaway yard percentage which was the percentage of yards that were uh, on breakaway runs was 47.8 34th uh ranking um you got anything to add to that rob yeah i actually wanted to hop in and add uh if you if you follow, I don't know if you guys follow F Ball Insights on Twitter. Got great analytics on there, and uh, what what really matters to me is the breakaway run rate, like the percentage of runs that go for fifteen or more yards, not so much the total yardage. And in this, Zach Evans was first in the nation, tied with Dwayne McBride. Which, I mean, Dwayne McBride is a smaller school guy, so you you got a guy going in the SEC playing against SEC competition, and you got Dwayne right. McBride. I mean, to me, that matters a little bit more. So, so that's the percentage first. of attempts that went for 15 yards or more. Yeah, PFF doesn't have that stat, so I I, I like that stat. That's a good stat. Yeah, especially F-ball when you like insight. the guy. F ball insights. He, he's got he's got great analytics on there. I think he pulls them his, himself. So, and the other guys in the top of that, like top five in that, Dwayne McBride is two. We got Tajay Spears, Devon A Chain, 
and Keaton Mitchell all in the top five there. It's three small school guys, and then Devon H. Aiden is one of the most explosive running backs in the nation. So it only right. makes sense that he's breaking away runs. I mean, yeah, I mean that, that goes that goes right with the plus ten yard runs, thirty two plus fifteen yard runs, uh, seventeen for him, and, and you gave the the rankings on those. So all that kind of m- mashes right up, and I think that think that paints a picture of of who Evans is a little bit better than the transfers and and the negative yeah. characters. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, do, did you have anything on on the on the uh, receiving upside or downside? Yeah, because these numbers aren't great, right? Like the, the, the I mentioned the target share and and uh, the the reception market share. You look at the total receiving yards or, or receptions eight, ten, and twelve. A total of thirty for his career. You know, not a ton of yards. Uh, some drops in there. It gets a little iffy. What what's your take on the, on the receiving side of things here? Yeah, I'm not going to say he's some spectacular receiving back because we all know he's not. But to me, a lot of that comes down to like the schemes they run in college. And if they want to include their running back, when pe- when teams are passing in college, they're, they're usually trying to get first downs and stuff. You're not usually checking down to running back. So like I just feel like that has a lot more to do with scheme than his actual ability to catch the ball. It's not like he's going to catch like – 80 passes a season, nothing like that. But Josh Jacobs was thought of as like he can't catch passes and all of a sudden he's he's being pretty productive in that area. If you're asked to do it and you're capable of doing it like Evans is, I'm like that's really all that matters to me, honestly. There's also I mean, if you look at it, there are some pretty bad drops. I mean, there's only there's only a certain amount of all twenty twos I could find, but like there he drops some bad ones, and then later in that game, he's wide open in the flat, and they don't they don't even look at him. He gets a little mad. Like maybe the, the argument for the metrics guys is that if he was good at catching the ball, they would throw right. it to him. You and know? I, I think the difference for me is like I made an argument for Kenneth Walker last year, where I don't I think basically what you're saying the scheme they didn't throw it to any particular they went, didn't bring in some other running back and throw it to him a bunch. The scheme just they just Michigan State was not throwing it to a running back. Kenny Walker was perfectly capable of catching footballs, um, you know, and it, he looked semi natural at it. I would say I would knock I would knock Evans a little harder than uh, Kent than I was knocking Kenny because it does look unnatural at times for him catching passes. It doesn't look like we're about to do Charbonnet next after this. Charbonnet's hands look supernatural when when he's it just looks effortless. Super uh, and I'm not. Uh, my uh, argument always is with pass catching is like that's something you can get better at when you're a super athlete like this and you're at, like you just can't tell me that you can't figure out how to catch a fucking football uh, and if that's something that wants to be involved in with Evans at the next level and then they say hey we need we need you to catch 40 balls a game then go to the fucking jugs machine and catch some balls after practice we don't need you to be an elite route runner that's not what that's not what Evans is going to be. That wasn't what Kenny Walker is going to be. It's not what Charbonnet is. I just need you to be able to catch checkdowns and do a little bit of something out of the backfield. Um, and right now, I would I would put Evans in a little bit deficient in that category um, for me personally. Uh, but you know, I also I do think there is. It's not like there is a running back on the team that's catching a million passes for Ole Miss. Um, Fair. I believe. Uh, let me see. I don't think I have it right here, uh, but. I don't Judkins didn't catch a, a ton of balls I don't believe um, and they didn't have like some other satellite coming in catching a bunch of balls so uh, just they just didn't throw it to the back a ton I believe I could be wrong on that uh, let me know in the comments to me to me it's like it's like if you can catch a check down it's all about what you could do with the ball in your hands and that's sure. really what it comes down to with Evans it's like okay he, I agree with you guys he's not he's not a natural pass catcher but once he catches that ball, you I mean shit, he could be breaking 15, 20, 40 yard touchdown. Like he he he's making the first guy miss almost every time he has the ball in his hand. So Right. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I flipped on the tape and I think Yeah, Judkins only had fifteen receptions, so I think when you what I think when you talk about the hands maybe being uh unnatural the, the rushing ability is just so natural to him. It just looks effortless. Everything he does, uh, you know, that, that it's the complete opposite of what you what I how I view the passing game for him. Like the, 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 you flip on the tape and it's like, I, I'm not really sure what you're upset about when you're actually physically watching him play the game. I mean, he's he's obviously great in, in picking up chunk gains for you um i think he's fluid enough in his hips you know you watch enough tape and there's plenty of times if he seemed like he was a 
more successful outside runner than an inside runner, but that was I think the scheme was a little bit more dependent on on outside runs than than inside runs, at least for Evans anyway. Um, but you know, there there I saw I sent videos to both of you guys. You know, ceiling plenty of times where just he has a natural feel of sucking up to that line, getting getting the linebacker to come through, pick the wrong hole, and then he's elusive and fluid and his hips are good enough to kind of just kick right around without really de-accelerating and getting around that end and then another 10 15 yards and the contact balance is pretty damn good on him you're not going to bring him down with too many weak ass arm tackles you you never see him really just falling down uh from a, a, a garbage contact or whatever um just a sturdily built man with with above average athletics uh with just a natural innate ability to be a, a well above average rusher that that's what really sticks out to me is just how he, he can when he when he's trying to juke somebody out he almost doesn't even have to juke somebody out right like he, it doesn't he look pre- super athletic he just it looks so easy for him exactly it, it's like he just he almost presses one way he he makes a step in one direction to go cut up field and the defender is just he he can't let him go that way so he just bounces it back outside and he's just like just how when he flips his hips he can just be going one direction and then cut back the other way without even having to like slow down or anything at all like he he just it's all in one motion where like the guy gets juked out and he doesn't even do a juke you know what i'm saying yeah, I don't really know why more people aren't higher on this guy. Like, I know you got him real high, Rob. Uh, he could be arguably the best pure runner in this class. Now, I haven't dived into the all 22s of Bijan. I've watched plenty of Bijan. I know he's awesome. Uh, and, and and we just did – we're about to do Charbonnet. So, I, I like a lot what he's bringing to the table. But just from a pure rushing standpoint, this man is so dirty. Like you mentioned, he might not have elite athleticism, but – the way he moves, he's got something. No, because like, yeah. he doesn't have to like. You're he doesn't not, have to juke and jive. Not, he just fucking moves. You're like, not the number one recruit running back right. or nation without. Be, I'm not saying he's not athletic. I don't think he's elite athlete, but I mean, I think he's he's very athletic. And 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 then the natural ability that's just God given, and it just the innate, you know, the instincts, feel that he has. Right, the is, feel, it, the smoothness, the fluidity. And then if you do have, you know, the change of direction isn't even abrupt. It's just fluid. It just, he just moves, you know, shout out to Angelo. He's, he's got great movement skills and I love the way he moves. And if you do happen to get near him, he fucking truck sticks you. Like he runs through you. Like yeah. he's got some of what Charbonnet has. Cause Charbonnet is bowling balls dudes over. Like, yeah. and, and Evans has some of that too. Like, I, I don't know why. People aren't more higher on him. I get, you know, it's the production profile. It's the receptions. But when you look at this man, Rush, when you watch him on the field, it's phenomenal. That's the thing. I mean, people complain about his vision, and I I can understand that a little bit. Like, he he definitely doesn't make the best decisions at all times. But when he gets in that open field and he has one guy to make miss, like, there's no way that dude is tackling him. Yeah, so, I mean, we we – we both seem to really like him. All three of us seem to really like him. Where he ends up being ranked, I can't really say yet because we haven't gotten far enough into all these prospects. But, um, you know, just the surface level of Tank and Tucker and those kind of guys, I'd say he's got to be right there with him. I'm not I'm not necessarily ready to knock him way down under. I know that tier of guys, the Tucker Tank, uh, Evans tier, is, is seems very... Um, Do they even put Charbonnet in that tier? I think I don't even know, but Charbonnet should be a... And it feels like Tucker's in the, ahead of that tier for most right, people. Right now it does. Um, but And we had Angelo on. You guys have either seen that or you are able to see that soon. He, he's got a good perspective of kind of all these guys. He's a little more negative on Evans uh, than us. He's He says it's going to boil down to draft capital for him, which of course it will. If, if Evans gets the good draft capital, then we're, we're going to be much more into Evans. Evans is going to rank higher if Evans goes in the fourth round then we're going to be pushing Evans down a little bit um, probably closer into that second round uh, threshold for for Evans if he if he gets that kind of draft capital so you know. one of the things I didn't mention on the metrics and analytics is is draft capital is like one of the biggest things sure. for running backs right um, and, and the NFL is going to tell us how they feel about this man from a character standpoint and from a 
receiving standpoint, you right. know, if they if they hate that or they're willing to give them a chance. Now, just because they give them good draft capital doesn't mean the character's going to be awesome. So there right. is a still a bit of a, I mean, but it just seemed like so many people are trying to paint a negative light just to hate because they're mad he left TCU or they're mad he didn't come to their school or whatever. And, but then, like, you read some articles and they say he, he was a good teammate and, right. and, and, and he did the right thing. But then there's just, other, it, he's a five-star diva if you read other things. It doesn't it's line like, up with all the things that it should typically line up with for a prospect of his magnitude, which is, I think, why people are a little more down on him we tried to give you the picture tried to paint it for you of saying hey you know some circumstances of yeah you could view it as excuses he should have just taken a stranglehold of this but again at the end of the day there's coaches and other things involved it's not just Evans you know obviously if he was you know just Saquon Barkley then you know maybe even Saquon split some carries a little bit here and there uh, but you know I'm just not going to get too down on him for those things. I'll let the draft capital kind of decide it for you. If the second or third round draft capital, Shit. then he's got to be right in the mix Fire of, him up. of all of these guys because I think the talent is is certainly there. Um, you know, pass pro may be one other thing that is kind of suspect at times, but that could be a learned uh, trait. He I mean, did. He wasn't asked to pass protect a ton. I have some cut ups, you know, where he's he is whiffing. Um, and then when you look at the the grades on PFF, they're not strong. Right. Uh, so. That's but that's a lot of guys have pass protection issues, sure. you know, and and, and these are world class athletes. And you Kyron Williams NFL. might have been one of the better pass protectors out of the draft last year, and look what that did for you. Yeah, he got um, hurt, right? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> like it's not like they're like, oh, he can pass protect. Let's take him in the second. You know, um, right, right. So right. it's obviously it's also a learnable trait. Just like he's also small, gaining pass catching ability or or comfortability with pass catching is something that you can get more comfortable with if this man um, has his head right and decides to to put the work in like every nfl player has to right. do regardless of talent he's gonna be good yeah and i think i think the combine testing is going to be just fine i don't think he, he might blow one or two categories up and four then, four two and that's then, what he's proposed i, I would assume that he you might maybe in the running high, away high from four people fours, right like high four fours which is great sub four Six, five one, would be great yeah so. I'm down with that, and I and I like Evan, so it'll be interesting to see where the rest of these running backs kind of slide in, what the NFL thinks, what the combine thinks. So we'll put all those pieces of the cult to, to together of the puzzle, and we'll we'll be touching on Evans once we have more of these guys. We'll be doing plenty of mocks, so go ahead and like, subscribe, follow, all those good things. We're gonna be hitting more profiles. We're gonna we got a, a rookie first round mock coming up here with the guys from Dynasty Theory, um, so that's gonna be a good time, uh, but. Zach Evans, I'm excited that we started with him. I'm, I'm, I'm more positive than what I thought would be coming out of it because of the general tone right. of, of Evans. Tone so. isn't good, and tone's everything. Right. Don't talk to me with the wrong tone, that's, please. That's right. Hey, we'll take the discount. We'll take the discount. Sure. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Um, so, again, we appreciate y'all. We'll see you next time. Peace.